Hey YouTubers, this is Kathy here and I am putting a video together for a friend of mine who wants to know the difference between quail males and quail females. So, here we go. First I'm going to start out with the eggs. These are the eggs. I just dropped this one and cracked it, so I'm going to have to cook it real quick. Um, this is another one. This is another one. These are typical of, um, of my quail. And sometimes I get really neat eggs like this one, who's almost a greenish brown color and has a dark end on it. Um, and some like these. But this one right here is almost marbled. It's really kind of cool. Anyways, and I sometimes get blue eggs. So, I want to show you um, the difference between males and females. Let me get out a female. Hold on one second. Okay, this is a female. And you see her chest, it's all plumed out and really pretty and has darker colors in there. That shows you that she's a female. Now, when I turn her over, she's not liking this very much. and uh, show you her vent it's it's a uh, it's it's hard to see whether I'm showing you able to show you or not but see how it's uh see how the vent Okay, on females, see how the vent is quite large and it is clean. There's no white mucus coming from her. Well, let me show you about a boy. Now the boys are a little bit more annoying. <laughs> they try to get away from you better. See how beautiful he is? It's nice and golden throughout his chest feathers. There's no, um, there's a couple right there at the edge, but there's no really, throughout here, there's no um, changing of feathers like this. On the females, remember, it was lighter color and it had a lot of darkness in there. Now. Let me show you his vent. See how his comes out there and it has a little mucus. It'll usually be white. That's his business. So they're pretty easy to tell the difference when they're uh, Caternix or Jumbo uh, Caternix meat makers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I have a mixture of both. Um, the larger the uh, meat maker, the larger the eggs will be. <clears throat> What's neat about them is I have oh, probably 15 in each side and that's my breeders. And uh, I have uh, out of those 15, I have about three males in each side, and um, the rest are females. I always choose my largest males 
um, to breed, to do, to do my breeding. And, um, they, they take care of business. Now I could put more males in there, but the more males that you put in there, the more fighting that you have. So I'd rather have a lower hatch rate than my babies fighting with each other. I've had, I've had uh, cases where there were juveniles that were getting old enough to be um, called and they were, they were fighting and hurting each other and I, I don't want that at all. So, that being said, um, I try to keep my, my quails um, on the smaller side of uh, how many I keep in each, each, uh, each pen and uh, they don't take about, they, they really don't take a lot of food. I'd say they take mm, anywhere between um, a half a pitcher. I use a pitcher to fill up their, their um, feeders every day. And that pitcher is never empty whenever I come out if, um, if it's filled properly the day before. So, uh, I try to get them first thing in the morning. Now, if I wait later on in the day, yes, they will have eaten everything because they eat a lot more in the morning than they do the evening. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about my babies? Now, you can hear the chickens, but you can barely hear the quail. They make a beautiful humming noise. Nobody ever knew I had them. And, um, come on, Mr. Silky, you're awfully loud. He doesn't, he doesn't care whether that I'm trying to do a, a video or not. Anyways, so, um, that is my, um, that's my, um, thing. I want to show you about how we do our feeders. This is, this is my feeder. And, um, what we did was we cut holes all the way down the PVC and put ends on there and put legs that will stand up. And that way I can put it in there and, and, and it won't roll. Um, the end comes off and I fill it down through the tube. Now, my babies love that because they can stick their head down in there and they eat and I don't have a lot of waste. Um, occasionally an end will come off while I'm putting it back in. That's my own clumsiness. But for the most part, the ends stay on really nicely and um, um, the quails like it and they don't get all their food all over the place. That's why I don't have very much waste and I don't have... They don't eat as much as some people have told me that theirs eat. And I think it's because they're, they're you know, putting it in a bowl or they're scratching it out. Because quails are not like chickens. They might scratch it and get it out too. But they also sling it with their head. So that way, if they have to put their head in and down, they don't tend to be able to sling it all over the place. Now I've seen some um, some channels do the little Tupperware or Rubbermate, whatever they are, the little plastic containers with the lids on. They they cut holes in the side, then they feed it down, and the and the quails stick their head in there and feed it. Well, those are fine and dandy, but they are not going to last. And they and I did try them and they don't last like these these tubes do this is what the waters look like in our cages and all you have to do to make sure it works is do that right there and it comes stringing out okay so on the top 
I have a five gallon bucket that I keep full of water and it drains down from that into the tube and down into the PVC and it feeds every single cup that I have in this uh, in this uh, cage all down through there anyways top and bottom and I have uh, a little um, I have the ability to be able to take it down and um, drain it now the neat thing about this setup is that if it runs dry over there on the side I can uh, I can uh, purge it and get the air out by draining it down so also um, I can run vinegar down through there and clean out the pipes if I see that they're getting any kind of algae or anything in them which happens on the uh, um, rabbit cages so um, it's a really nice setup I only have to fill that that uh, five gallon uh, container I'd say if I let it go it would probably last three days but I put fresh water in it every day and every week I add vinegar to that water so that uh, it helps them and keeps them healthy.